Welcome to Teaching Through the Bible with Dr. Ken Sullivan. As a veteran senior pastor, Dr. Sullivan understands the importance of Bible teaching in the spiritual growth and development of God's people. Dr. Sullivan's method of teaching the Bible is to read and carefully explain each chapter and verse in clear and understandable terms so the student of the Bible gains the full understanding of God's Word. Now prepare yourself to learn and grow as Dr. Sullivan teaches through the Bible. Well, hello and welcome to another session of Teaching Through the Bible. I'm Dr. Kenneth Sullivan. Well, today we're studying in the book of Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8, and I'm reading in the New Living Translation. So let's just jump right into our study. Revelation chapter 8, and I'm reading verse 1. When the Lamb broke the seventh seal on the scroll, there was silence throughout heaven for about half an hour. Now, in Revelation chapter 5, John saw the scroll with the seven seals on it. The, uh, the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, had taken that scroll and opened uh, six of the seals. And with the opening of each one of these seals, uh, a terrible judgment was meted out upon the earth. Uh, the first four seals released the four horsemen, uh, each one on a different uh, colored horse. Uh, when he opened the first seal, a white horse went forth. Its rider carried a bow and a crown was placed on his head. Uh, he rode out to win battles and to gain the victory, uh, the scripture says. So we explained that this rider was, on the white horse was the Antichrist. He will conquer the whole world uh, and rule by means of war and conquest uh, and threaten the whole world. Uh, when he opened the second seal, when the lamb opened the second seal, a red horse went forth. We explained that the red horse with his rider and his mighty sword are symbolic of, of world war. Uh, he will take peace from the earth and people will be slaughtering each other everywhere. And then when uh, the lamb opened the third seal, a black horse and his rider uh, came out holding a pair of scales in his hand. The black horse and its rider holding the scales represents famine and starvation that follows war. When he opened the fourth seal, uh, a pale green horse went forth. Its rider was named Death and his companion was the grave, the scripture said. So these two were given authority over uh, one-fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with famine, with disease, and with wild animals. Uh, so this is just a little review of that before we go into um, the next phase. Now, when the Lamb broke the fifth seal, John saw under the altar the souls of those who had uh, been martyred for the word of God and, and for being faithful in their testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when the Lamb broke the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake. The sun became as dark as black cloth and the moon became as red as blood. Uh, then the stars of the sky fell to the earth like green figs falling from the, a tree shaken by the wind, the scripture says. And, and the sky was rolled up like a scroll and all the mountains and islands were move from their places. We went into depth in that in our, in our study as we covered these things. Now, John saw all these terrible judgments upon the earth. Now he is watching um, as the lamb breaks the seventh seal on the scroll. Uh, as he removed the seventh uh, seal, uh, there is this great silence throughout heaven for about the space of half an hour. There was silence. Now, this Ominous silence is in, is in anticipation, uh, in anticipation of the judgments that are about to be released upon the earth. All of heaven knows that something uh, terrible is about to happen on the earth, uh, and they wait in silence. This seventh seal is about to open another whole series of plagues and judgments upon the earth. This seventh seal opens seven trumpets. And each trumpet blast announces a specific terror and judgment upon the earth. Now I'm reading verses 2 through 4. I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and they were given seven trumpets. Then another angel with a gold incense burner came and stood at the altar. And a great amount of incense was given to him to mix with the prayers of God's people 
as an offering on the gold altar before the throne. The smoke of the incense mixed with the prayers of God's holy people ascended up to God from the altar where the angel had poured them out. Now, uh, seven angels were given seven trumpets to sound, and the trumpets will announce seven plagues that are about to be released upon the earth. Each blast of a trumpet will release a different plague. But before the angels begin to sound their trumpets, John's attention is drawn to another angel who is holding a gold incense burner in his hand. He mixes a large amount of incense with the prayers of God's people that are coming up from the earth. And the smoke of the incense uh, mixed with the prayers ascends up to God in a sweet fragrance. Incense is similar to prayers in that um, it is precious, um, it is pleasant to God, and it ascends upward. Uh, it, 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 it has a, a, a sweet fragrance. God listens to the prayers of his saints like sweet music, and he receives them like a sweet aroma. Uh, the Apostle James wrote these words, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. That's James 5.16 in the New Living Translation. Now, it's not stated what these saints were praying for, but God accepted their prayers uh, that were mixed with the incense. Now I'm reading verse 5. Then the angel filled the incense burner with fire from the altar and threw it down upon the earth, and thunder crashed, lightning flashed, and there was a terrible earthquake. Now, when this angel filled the incense burner uh, with fire from the altar and, and threw it down upon the earth, the earth convulsed uh, from the effect with another terrible earthquake accompanied by uh, loud crashes of thunder and bright flashes of lightning. This was a terrifying thing to live through, especially for those uh, who will have rejected God. This was the second great earthquake. There was another earthquake that the, uh, that the lamb, uh, um, that came out when the lamb broke the sixth seal. That's in Revelation 6 and 12. Now I'm reading verses 6 through 7. Then the seven angels with the seven trumpets prepared to blow their mighty blasts. The first angel blew his trumpet, and hail and fire mixed with blood were thrown down on the earth. One third of the earth was set on fire. One third of the trees were burned and all the green grass was burned. This uh, begins another series of judgments from God upon the earth. The first of seven angels blew his trumpet and hail, fire, and blood are thrown down upon the earth. Uh, a few of these plagues are actually similar to the ones that God used um, Moses to bring upon the earth during the time that the Israelites were in bondage uh, under the Egyptians in slavery. Uh, at that time, God unleashed 10 plagues upon the earth, uh, each one a little worse than the, than the last. And that's in, you can find that in Exodus 7 through 12, chapter 7 through 12, if you want to read about that in your own time. After the first angel blows his trumpet, fire engulfs one third of the trees and all of the green grass, um, fully one third of all vegetation is destroyed by this plague of, of blood, fire, and hail. Not to mention the, uh, the human and animal lives that, that uh, will be lost. Now, these are not natural disasters. These are supernatural judgments from God. Now, it's not hard to imagine how this plague will affect those who survive it. The smoke from this burning vegetation will likely obscure the sunlight and, and produce the air, further damaging the, the Earth's ecosystem. Now, although John, uh, John's record of these events appear to be reported in the order in which they will occur, that is, sequential order, um, it's likely that they may not happen just in the order that John represents them but it's certain that these things will uh, come to pass in the order of God's own choosing. And certainly these things will be happening in a, in a short space of time, regardless of what sequence they unfold in, 
Um, most scholars believe that this will happen in the last three and a half years of, of human history upon the earth or the last three and a half e years of the tribulation period before Christ comes and takes over the world and sets up his kingdom upon the earth. Now, it's also possible that each one of these series of judgments that are represented uh, are, are not more plagues, but, but more details of what will happen with each of the six original judgments that God brought up on the earth with the, uh, with the, uh, the, the first um, six seals. For example, the seven trumpet judgments may not be a, a completely new series of judgment um, from the seven sealed judgments, but they, they may simply be more details about those seven sealed judgments. Now, the seven bowls of wrath that will follow the seven trumpets uh, may be even more uh, details about the original six sealed judgments. Some commentators think John is describing the same events in all three series of judgments, but just using different words and different details uh, giving more information about these things. And certainly that is a definite possibility. Now I'm reading verses eight through nine. Then the second angel blew his trumpet and a great mountain of fire was thrown into the sea. One third of the water in the sea became blood. One third of all things living in the sea died. And one third of all the ships on the sea were destroyed. This great mountain burning with fire could easily be a giant asteroid or or meteor that hurls through the Earth's atmosphere and crashes into the sea. However, uh, this will not be a natural phenomenon because one third of the sea becomes blood. This is similar to the miracle that God worked through Moses uh, and his rod in the, in the book of Exodus when he turned the water into blood. Um, a third of the living creatures will die, possibly from contamination from the meteor which may poison the water, or from uh, the water being turned to blood. And that will certainly choke out the uh, marine life. Now, John does not clearly, uh, he doesn't clarify exactly which sea he's referring to here when, when he says a third of the sea will be affected. Perhaps he's talking about the Mediterranean Sea, and that's possibly uh, likely what he's talking about. John said a third of marine life will die and a third of the ships will be destroyed. Now I'm reading verses 10 through 11. Then the third angel blew his trumpet and a great star fell from the sky, burning like a torch. It fell on one third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star was bitterness. It made one third of the water bitter and many people died from drinking the bitter water. So the third angel uh, blowing his trumpet, um, he brought a plague on the fresh water, um, the supplies of fresh water on the earth. Uh, the great star that will fall to the earth could be another meteor or asteroid or, or comet or something else that God chooses to use. God is not limited in his resources. Now, this one is certainly poisonous, and it poisons one-third of the rivers and springs of water, all of the uh, one third of the fresh water. And John is even given the name of the star. It is a bitterness or wormwood in the, in the uh, King James version, it says wormwood. One third of the waters became bitter or, or poisonous and many people will die from drinking this poisonous water. Terrible time in history ahead of us. Now verse, I'm reading verse 12. Then the fourth angel blew his trumpet and one third of the sun was struck, one third of the moon, and one third of the stars, and they became dark. And one third of the day was dark, and also one third of the night. Now the, the fourth angel blew his trumpet, and one third of the sun, moon, and stars became dark. Uh, this would not only bring darkness, but it would also affect uh, the climate on Earth. Gross darkness will fall upon one-third of the day and night. That means that there will be uh, eight hours of, of total darkness upon the earth in addition to the regular uh, night time. But it will be darker than the regular uh, time of night, which means that there will be less than eight hours of daylight in a day during this time. 
Jesus predicted that this would happen during the Great Tribulation period. He said, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. That's Matthew 24 and 29. Uh, as I make this recording, the world is reeling from the effects of the coronavirus. America is enter entering into uh, its third week of the spread of this virus and schools and businesses, and restaurants and sports events and other events and venues are being shut down as I speak. Uh, our whole way of life is being disrupted and upended over one virus. Imagine the chaos that will ensue when God releases these terrible plagues upon the world, one after another. I would, uh, I'd urge anyone who, who hasn't yet turned to faith in Christ uh, to do so. Uh, ask God to uh, forgive you of your sins and, and to, to save you from your sins and to save you from the coming wrath, because uh, we can see, we all know that things are changing in this world, and we can see the signs everywhere that the Lord's coming is near. It's time to call upon the, the Lord for salvation. It's, it's time to seek the Lord, the Bible says, while he may be, may be found. So um, God is in the business of saving people, and these things uh, that I'm teaching about are just warnings to the world. Um, to get right with God, to seek after the Lord and, and to put our faith in him uh, and to follow after him, all right? Now I'm reading verse 13. Then I looked and I heard a single eagle crying loudly as it flew through the air, terror, terror, terror to all who belong to this world because of what will happen when the last three angels blow their trumpets. The New Living Translation and the NIV both say an eagle flew in the air. But other translations like the King James uh, and uh, the King James Version and the New King James Version say uh, it was an angel. The ancient Greek words for angel and eagle are very close in spelling. So I lean toward uh, the translators that say it was an angel. Uh, an angel flew through the air crying with a loud voice, terror, 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 or whoa, 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 because of what will happen when the last three angels blow their trumpets. Now, this chapter ends with a cliffhanger. God has interrupted the normal rhythm of the earth and introduced great fear and uncertainty. Human beings have been led to believe that the normal cycles of, uh, and the routines of the earth would continue uninterrupted, unabated forever and ever because um, because they have been taught that they are the results of evolution, not the result of creation. Now, God comes and demonstrates his complete control over the heavens and the earth, over nature, with one uh, uh, unnatural disaster after another. Now, God prepares to unleash more terror and woe upon the earth. Um, things that people have relied on as natural occurrences, like the the sun coming up in the morning will no longer be uh, uh, taken for granted. God will interrupt the cycles uh, of the cosmos, the cycles of nature, uh, and take hold of the forces of nature and, and show the world that he is creator and controller of all of creation. Now, if you are a follower of Christ, then the future is very bright for you. And the Bible tells us not to be afraid. Uh, we are to look up. If you're not a Christian, you can become one today. Just ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins and, and to save you from your sins and save you from the wrath to come. Jesus encouraged his followers that when we see all these things take place, he says, so when you see all these things begin to happen, stand up, stand and look up for your salvation is near. Our salvation is near. That's Luke 21, 28 in the New Living Translation. So uh, for the believer, there are bright days ahead, uh, beyond the dark days. Uh, we will rule and we will reign with Christ over a new uh, earth, uh, a regenerated earth. We will have perfect bodies. We will be in a perfect world of peace. There will be nothing for us to fear. Uh, Jesus Christ will rule the earth and godly people will rule under him. So we have a great future ahead of us 
but this is only through the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that brings us to the end of Revelation chapter 8. Next time, we will cover chapter 9. So until next time, may God bless you and keep you safe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for tuning in to Teaching Through the Bible with Dr. Ken Sullivan. We hope this program has benefited you in your Christian walk. For a free download of this program and to browse Dr. Sullivan's books, videos, and audio titles, visit our website at EmergeCurriculum.com. Please tune in to our next teaching session on Vision Stream Network or listen on demand from our podcast. 